In this chapter, we're going to talk about amines. We're going to look a little bit at the structure and some of the properties, the nomenclature, and then reactions. We'll also touch a little bit on some heterocycles that contain nitrogen. So first, just a little bit of review. We're going to look at how we classify amines. And it's a little different than the way we classify things like alcohols and organohalides because we're actually looking at the groups on the nitrogen. So let me just draw a fictitious molecule here. Now, of course, remember that nitrogen likes to form three bonds. And all of these nitrogen also have a lone pair. But now if we consider each of these nitrogens, let's start with the one on the left. It's connected to or bonded to two hydrogen and one carbon. So that makes this, since it's bonded to one carbon, a primary amine. Okay, the next nitrogen it's bonded to a hydrogen and one, two carbons. So that's a secondary amine. And then the third nitrogen, it's bonded to one, two, three carbons, making it a tertiary amine. Now related to this, we're going to look at one other type of amine in this chapter. And just to kind of think about how we get to it, let's just start with trimethylamine with its lone pair. And say we reacted it with bromomethane. We'll do an SN2 type reaction. We'll use the lone pair. Attack the carbon with bromine as a leaving group. Now what we end up with is four bonds on the nitrogen and no lone pair. The formal charge of this nitrogen is positive. And of course we still have Br- what we get here, since there's four things around the nitrogen, it's quaternary. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as a quaternary amine, but more accurately we would call this an ammonium salt. The next thing we're going to take a look at is just basic IUPAC nomenclature of amines. And the rules are very similar to alcohols. Whereas in alcohols, we drop the E and add OL. In amines, we're going to drop the E and add amine. Uh, just like alcohols, we'll give the amine priority for the lowest numbering. The only difference is, on amines, you'll often have other carbon groups on the nitrogen. And aside from uh, the parent that's connected, the other groups, you're going to name them as N-alkyl substituents.
So when we use numbering for substituents on the parent, this N designation in front of the name tells us that those substituents are on the nitrogen. But we'll alphabetize those right along with the rest of the substituents. So let's start with a simple example. A primary amine. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is find the longest carbon chain um, that has the nitrogen directly attached. Okay, we have to include this carbon because it's the one that has the nitrogen attached to it. So let's number this. I'm going to start here because that gives the nitrogen um, attachment point the lowest numbering. The only substituent I have to deal with is 2 isopropyl, and the parent is 5 carbons. It comes from pentane, but let's drop that E and add amine. So it's pentanamine. Okay, but we also need to designate where on that parent chain the nitrogen is attached. In this case it's at carbon 1, so we would put 1 in front of the parent name. So now we'll just write out our substituents, in this case just 2 isopropyl, and then our parent one pentanamine. Okay, it's really common for people to want to try to shorten it and say pentamine. Okay, you keep that A end of the parent. Now let's look at one that's a little more complex uh, that has nitrogen substituents. Okay, let's say you have this one. So our longest carbon chain that has the nitrogen attached is this. So that's our parent chain, and nitrogen will get the lowest numbering if we start from the right. We'll do one all the way to eight. Eight carbons. That will be octanamine as the parent. And the nitrogen is attached at carbon two. So octanamine is our parent. Now our substituents. We have a 5-bromo, but then on the nitrogen, we have a methyl group, so we'll call that N-methyl. And we have an ethyl group, that's N-ethyl. Now you just alphabetize these substituents by the first letter. The N doesn't count for alphabetizing. So B comes first, so we start with 5-bromo. Then the E and ethyl, so we'll do N-ethyl. Then N-methyl. 2-octanamine. Let's also take a look at some heterocyclic amines. So 
So this just means there's some atom other than carbon in the cycle, and in this case we're just looking at nitrogens. We're going to look at four common heterocycles. The first we've seen several times before, which is pyridine. And that's a six-membered ring containing a nitrogen. Now, if we don't have those double bonds, we have the NH. This is called pipiridine. Then we have the five-membered variation of pyridine, where we do have the double bonds. This is still an NH. This is called pyrrole. And then the version without the double bonds is called pyrrolidine. Now, for numbering these, the nitrogen always gets the atom one designation. And then you would number around the ring to give your lowest possible substituent numbering. So just for one example, let's say you had this dye substituted papyridine. Nitrogen would be one. And we just number around our ring. And really nothing new here, alphabetize your substituent, followed by the parent name. So we have 3-bromo, 4-methyl, papyridine.